In 1914, Mitsuyo Isaya Maedo, also known as Count Como, arrived in Brazil to establish a Japanese immigration colony. Maeda was aided in his quest by a Brazilian scholar of Scottish heritage, Gasteo Gracie. Maeda was not an ordinary immigrant. He was a direct pupil of the founder of Judo, Jagoro Kano. Further, Maeda was a master of both Judo and Japanese Jiu-Jitsu. To repay Gasteo's kindness, Maeda taught Gasteo's oldest son, Carlos, the arts of Judo and Jiu-Jitsu. In turn, Carlos then taught the art to three of his four brothers, Oswaldo, Gasteo, and George. And in 1925, the first Gracie Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Academy was opened in Rio de Janeiro. The fourth brother, Elio, was a frail young man, weighing only 135 pounds, and was not included in the original instruction. However, as the story goes, he watched it attentively from the side of the mat, and one day, when the other brothers failed to show up to teach class, Elio provided instruction based on his modified versions of the Jiu-Jitsu techniques. Elio focused on using leverage rather than strength to apply the techniques. The concept of techniques based on leverage, not strength, is a feature of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Properly utilized strength is the essential present principle. To prove the effectiveness of this art, the Gracies followed in the tradition of Maeda and provided an open challenge to anyone who doubted the applicability of BJJ in a real fight. These challenges, known as Vale Tudo, Portuguese for anything goes, matches, manifested themselves in a manner of combat that is the precursor to today's MMA. The Gracie's fame quickly grew as a result of their success of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and the open challenge matches, so much so that the Gracie family wanted a larger stage to so showcase the efficiency of their family's art. In 1993, Elio's oldest son, Orion, along with Art Davey, held the first Ultimate Fighting Championship, or UFC, in the USA in Denver, Colorado. As a means to ex exhibit the effectiveness of this art, and not the practitioner, the rather meek-looking Hoist Gracie was chosen to represent the family. To the surprise of many viewers, Hoist won three of the first four UFCs, and in the process, defeated opponents up to 80 pounds heavier than he was. The advent of the USC and the success of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu caused many martial practitioners to question long-held assumptions about the effectiveness of their martial art in a real combat situation. After the initial UFCs, there was a surge in the martial world toward learning Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because BJJ dominated the initial MMA and No Holds Barred or NHB shows in North America, Brazil, Japan, and Russia. But over time, the image of the BJJ fighter as the, uh, as the constant victor in MMA shows diminished, as the hybrid style of the MMA fighter emerged. Even today, the art of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu remains a crucial component of the skills training for any aspiring or successful MMA fighter. In particular, the majority of ground positions and submissions commonly encountered in an MMA fight have their origins in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Therefore, a BJJ conditioning program has benefits for grappling and MMA. In competition, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu match may last anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes, based on the age and rank of the competitors. Recently, BJJ practice and competition has become divided between two forms of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Gi and No Gi. The primary difference separating the two forms of BJJ is based on whether the practitioners are wearing the traditional martial arts uniform, or Gi. No Gi BJJ is characterized by a looser and faster style of rolling, or live sparring. In addition, the no-gi style of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu corresponds more directly with mixed martial arts. While there do exist slight modifications in the techniques one applies to gi or no-gi, the muscles most commonly used in BJJ remain constant. Almost all techniques in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu are based on either pulling or a squeezing movement. For example, to execute a hip throw, a BJJ fighter must first pull his opponent tight against him. Or, to complete a rear naked choke, a BJJ fighter must use his squeezing strength to maximize the effectiveness of his technique. The best way to describe the squeezing applicable to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is to liken it to the constriction of a boa or a python. Watch how an anaconda constricts his prey and you will get the general idea. 
While strength training using pushing movements will increase overall power, these push movements do not have the same direct benefit to the practice of BJJ as pulling and squeezing movements. Therefore, the muscles associating with squeezing and pulling should be focused to improve the application of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu technique. However, training and pushing movements creates a balance in the muscle groups of the BJJ athlete and can prevent the onset of injuries caused by disproportional strength. A strong core plays an important role in the application of almost all BJJ techniques. Among other things, a stronger core leads to a more responsive midsection, which enables faster rotation in throws, takedowns, sweeps, and submissions. With regard to BJJ and strength training, some could argue that the correct application of BJJ techniques precludes the need for strength training. This argument is based on the fundamental concept of pure Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Technique overcomes strength. However, between two competitors of red, relatively equal skill, it is the one who is stronger and better conditioned who will prevail. The BJJ practitioner who sincerely desires to be the best possible must adopt a comprehensive strength and conditioning program. For more on this, check out our book Grapple Strong by clicking the link below.